Hello, my name is Brian Atkinson and welcome to UK Aircraft Explored. In this video, we shall cover the Avro Lancaster's Fraser Nash FN5 Ford gun turret. We shall be referring to the wartime air ministry manuals that were used by air and ground crews at the time. Hope you find this interesting. The FN5 is a two gun turret and consists of a circular ring which rotates on roller bearings in a fixed ring bolted to the airframe. A spherical shaped cupola consisting of a metal frame with perspex panels is fixed to the rotating ring, completely enclosing the upper part of the turret and rotating with it, thus providing the necessary protection for the air gunner from the airstream. The two Browning .303 inch guns are mounted in cradles which pivot on two large diameter needle roller bearings housed in gun brackets which are secured to the rotating ring and serve as caudal stiffeners. The guns are elevated and depressed by two double acting hydraulic rams hinged at their lower ends to the gun brackets and connected at their piston rod ends to the gun cradles through a system of links. The air gunner's seat is mounted near the centre of the turret and has two height adjusting screws which can be operated by two adjusting handles fitted to the caudal stiffeners. The turret's cupola consists of a light alloy tubular framework covered with moulded perspex panels and bolted to an accommodation ring which is attached to the rotating ring of the turret. The perspex panels are attached to the framework by clamping bolts inserted through the tubular frame members. Two adjustable ventilators are fitted to the top of the cupola. Two gun slots are built into the framework of the cupola and are fitted with cupola sealing plates which engage with gun sealing plates attached to and moving with the gun cradles, thus forming a continuous draft proof gun seal during the elevation and depression of the guns. As the guns are not in line with the air gunner's eye, direct sighting is not possible and a free gun reflector sight is therefore coupled by levers and links to the gun cradles and is elevated or depressed in unison with the gun movements. Here is a view of the gun sight projector type 2 Mark 1 as fitted to the FN5 turret. The sight radius arm is attached to the two side brackets which brace the arch frame to the gun brackets so that the sight is at a height convenient to the air gunner when he is seated in the turret. The two control handles are mounted in front of the air gunner on the caudal stiffeners and are connected through a system of levers and linkage to the valve box which is attached to the torque bracket situated underneath the gun cradles. The rotating service joint is supported at the top of the turret in the centre of the arch frame and is connected to the valve box by the main pressure and exhaust oil pipes incorporated in the arch frame. Control of the movements of the guns and turret is through three valves in the valve box and rotation is obtained from two hydraulic motors mounted in tandem on the rotating ring and geared to the circular gear rack secured to the fixed ring. Whenever the turret is rotated to its extreme positions, either side of the fore and aft centre line, a striking lever fitted to the rotating ring makes contact with fixed stops which are attached to the fixing ring. Synthetic rubber buffers fitted to the striking lever absorb any shocks. Palmer hydraulic firing control mechanism is fitted to the turret and is operated by Bowden cables from two finger triggers fitted to the control handles. 
Electrical services and intercommunication for the air gunner are supplied by flexible cable from a distributor panel adjacent to the turret. Hydraulic power is obtained from a pump driven by the starboard inner Merlin engine and supplying oil under pressure through a recuperator also acts as a reservoir along with a relief valve fitted outside the turret to the rotating service joint. Provision is made for the accommodation of two ammunition containers, each holding 1,000 rounds of ammunition. The ammunition belts are led from the containers through spiral ducts to the feed rollers and then onto the feed openings of the guns. Empty cartridge cases and links are discharged through chutes into containers attached to the turret bowl. In order to operate the gun turret, depress fully the levers in the control handles to operate the master valve and power the turret. Move the control handles anti-clockwise for left rotation and clockwise for right rotation and tilt them forward for gun depression and backward for gun elevation. Combined movements of the control handles will produce corresponding movements of the guns. The speed of operation of the turret is dependent upon the amount of movement given to the control handles. It is not intended that the master valve should be used as a speed controller. To rotate the turret manually in an emergency, raise the hand rotation finger grip in the direction of the arrow marked in and rotate the handle. To disengage the gear, depress the finger grip in the direction of the arrow marked out. Passage between the turret and the air bomber's compartment is affected through the underside of the turret rings, the air gunner's seat in this turret being swung back. Normally the guns are fully elevated with the turret rotated to and locked on the fore and aft centre line of the aeroplane when taking off or landing. Well that's it for this video, I hope you found it interesting. If you like what I do on this channel, please click the like button and consider subscribing. And also click the bell, remember it's free and you'll receive notifications when my future videos are posted. Thanks as always for watching and I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.